Welcome back everyone to the slimiest episode you'll ever see. Wait. <laughs> Smell that? No? <laughs> well, these Papua New Guinea flatworms do. Now we aren't born with an acute sense of smell designed to pick up goop trails left by slugs and snails, but they are. And thank god we aren't born with a creeping soul either. It's a means of travel by moving cilia back and forth while your special glands produce a constant pad of mucus for you to slide on. A never-ending water slide made of boogers. So let's follow the trail of the New Guinea flatworms all the way toward their origin. And there is a party going on, and we're gonna get to the bottom of it. What has caused all the commotion to draw all these worms out? Be lining toward a source. This helpless slug has been ambushed by flatworms. I know the word ambush is hard to believe, but you aren't a slug, are you? Are you? Of course, this slug tries to free itself, secreting its glue-like mucus, but to no avail. The planarians have inserted their eversible pharynx, or lack for better words, an inside-out throat, into the slug, secreting digestive mucus that melts the slug alive. Not only are they turning it into a very gooey smoothie, they're also locking themselves onto the slug. There is absolutely no escape. Every flatworm in the vicinity picking up the trail soon arrive. A slow painful demise awaits every mollusk the flatworms come across. Within 15 minutes, the slug has been swarmed unable to be seen under the black carpet of chemical weaponry, each planarian sucking up its remains, until there is nothing left. Wait just a moment, we're not done yet. Now since they're busy slurping up that delectable sludge, we have a spare moment. What exactly are flatworms? More specifically, these New Guinea flatworms. From the family Geoplanidae, Platydamus monoquari come equipped with tiny, barely useful eyes right at the front, being the longer pointy end. However, their mouth is tucked away under the middle part of their body where the inside-out throat is located. These guys hold a much bigger record for massive land invasions than the Allied forces on D-Day, taking over parts of the globe they accidentally get across to. They hide underneath the soil in the potted plants shipped overseas. They're also really fast at reproducing. Mating isn't even a necessity. With fragmentation, they can split the head and the tail end off, creating from one to now three. And the ends without a head will crawl about for two weeks or so until a new head and tail has regenerated. Cutting them into multiple pieces will also result in multiple more worms. The inside workings of their rapidly regenerating stem cells is still a big mystery. There are no known predators for these worms, adding another reason as to why they are so widespread. Only a few things seem to be slowing them down. Some land planarians will partake in cannibalism. The harsh conditions of some new habitats often prevent them from overthrowing the ecological balance. Their main weakness is lack of humidity or just extreme hots and colds, as well as salt. In poor or stressful conditions, I have witnessed with my own eyes that these planarians kinda self-destruct. They disintegrate into a pile of goop. Keep in mind, some parts of the globe are ripe for the taking, 
such as the Sunda Islands, where these invasive flatworms have conquered. Though we should be happy they only drink slug smoothies or earthworm smoothies and not us smoothies, they can still be dangerous, for a percentage of them have been found to harbor a parasitic nematode, the rat lungworm, easily transferable to us. So to that one kid who wants to eat living black licorice, just don't. <laughs>